I want to show you how I cut those um, little tits out. It's just basically a real small oval. And you don't want to cut anything more than you have to. And you just want to make sure you got the margins. So you can double check that against on the fur side. But no, the next, these will get closed up um, by fur machine. The other thing I do at this point is I also check the fur side for any damages and if there's any bald spots or scars or anything like that in the fur, I, I take care of this at this time. <clears throat> so these skins actually are pretty good. I have got one that's got a damage up near the arm um, or the leg, whatever you want to call it. And so I'm going to fix that. And But otherwise, they've been pretty good. So I haven't had a lot of work doing that. I'm sewing up the front leg openings. And this is the center back. And this is the belly side. And they are going to be a little bit more stretchy. And usually just a little longer on the belly side. So when you sew, you just kind of have to walk yourself through it. But you want to like gather or kind of hold in the belly side so that your um, openings meet. And once you get used to it and you know your machine, it works out pretty well because this will all lay flat once it's nailed. So just so you understand that, this had a little hole here by the front um, inside, so I had to stitch that up. But I just wanted to give you an idea that's going to be a little bit bigger. I wanted to show you what it looks like after I have it joined up. You can see they're a little waffly, but that will all come out in the nailing. So just make sure that you tuck your hair in well. And then after you're done with your seam, what you want to do is take the back end of your knife or something similar, and you want to press down that, that seam. And then I go to the first side and I also I comb it. So you take your fur, fur comb and you comb that seam so you're sure that you don't have any hairs stuck in that seam edge. What's next is we're going to prep our nailing space so we can get our skin nailed out. What I use is a, a homicide board. It's a pressed cell, cell, cellulose and it comes in like a four by eight sheet. I cut it down. I've got smaller ones, but on this table, um, I've got a four by eight or four by seven sheet. I've got a pretty good space here, but we're going to use this area. And what I did first was I drew a straight line and I made it 30 inches long. So I marked the bottom, marked the top, extended my line a little bit more. And then I went up three inches on each side. And what I've done is I took my stapler. I use a L19 tacker stapler. It's a pattern tacker stapler with a quarter inch. It takes different size staples, but I'm using a quarter inch staple. And I go down this line and I leave a raised staple about every four or five inches. So this is my center line that my center back is going to go on. And then I drew another line that's three inches out and um, put another row of staples going down that about the same distance apart and that's going to be like my fall line so when I had you mark 
that fall line on your inside of your skin. That's what I'm going to try to hit and nail and get to this edge. And then my center back seam is going to be on this edge or that line. And my other fall line seam, or not seam, edge, whatever you want to call it, um, is going to be on this one. So it's kind of confusing because I've used this table over and over again. But you can see my three areas. So here's my center back. Here's my three inches out. Here's my three inches out. Now, what I do next is I take water. And you can use a spray bottle or I just have a little basin of water and you wet your skin. And what you want is this thoroughly damp and I've got just a natural bristle brush. You don't want a scrub brush because you're not scrubbing it. And you wet your skin and you get it nice and saturated. Once you've got the water worked into it real well, you can see where the leather starts to look a little different color. Then what you do is you wet it real well all the way down and we're going to be nailing out these paws so I'm going to get those nice and wet too. After you've got it all saturated from the neck all the way to the rump, you're going to fold it in half so that it's leather side to leather side and you're going to let that sit for probably about 15 maybe 20 minutes and then you're going to come back and you're going to kind of like massage it because I want width and you're going to work your skin before you nail it down and you're going to want to stretch it so hand stretch it a little bit all the way and after we've had it down for about 15 minutes sitting like this then we're going to come back and we're going to nail it out so the water soaks in pretty well and you might even end up spritzing it a little bit with the water bottle while we're nailing it but we're going to get finished with this and then i'll show you how we start to nail it my um, bobcat has rested now for about 15 minutes and you can see how nice and supple it is. So I started at the top and my starting point is right here. And I put a couple staples in across the top and my stapler broke. So it lost something out of there. So I had to get my other trusty dusty stapler. And um, <clears throat> Proceed. So I put a couple across the top, stretched out what I could across that way, came down to the bottom, put one in at the center um, at the rump, and then what I did, I came across and I've got, I felt my staple line underneath, and I put one in here at the center, one here one here and now what I'm going to do is stretch this out and there's my fall line and see if I can't get that better than that three inch mark but at least that three inch mark. Now, up at the neck it's always tougher leather so up at the neck it's always a little bit harder to stretch where down at the bottom um, there's always a little bit more flexibility. So I'll show it to you when I get it completed. When I'm stapling this down, I try to keep, you know, very close to the edge. And my staples, I don't know, they're probably, could have probably throw another one in here. Um, they're probably maybe about an inch and a half or so apart. But I just want to show you, this was that front leg. And there's the other front leg opening. How nice that got once they got stretched out. If you wanted to be really accurate, you could throw a staple in probably right here 
and right here if you want to, but I think that's going to dry real nice. So I got my 30 inches and I got my width. So I did take out those um, staples I had in the center. I just didn't want them to dimple. And we'll see what happens when this dries. But this gives you a idea of got the paws nailed out and what it looks like when it's all done. So we're going to let this dry overnight and then we'll take it off the board. The skins are dry and the next step is to take them off the board. So what I like to do is I just hold the bottom of my pelt and I lift the paper and that releases the staples. So under here, it's where I have that uh, layer of Hamasat board. And then I do two layers of craft paper. Um, this happens to be white, but it can be any color. And then the staples just pop right off the table. So after they're off the table or separated, then what I'm going to do is you just take and pick the staples out. Um, I can use my staple uh, I've got the uh, two that I nailed out ready to come off the board. So what I like to do is lift the two layers of craft paper and my skin all at one time and it releases those staples. Now I come back with my staple lifter and you just easily pick those staples out. So once this is done, then we'll um, look at the fur side and see how everything um, looks next. After the staples are out, what I do is I take my fur brush and I um, comb the comb the pelt so all the hair is going in the right direction. And then I take a spritz bottle and gently mist the hair side and I'll comb that down, comb the hairs down one more time. So, um, and then they'll dry for probably about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. I wanted to show you what I did here though, is I did two skins where I split the belly. You can see the belly on here. And um, the same thing on that one, I did two where I did the bellies, uh, split along the bellies. But then I did this one where I split the back because they're eventually gonna be split down the back anyway. And so after this dries, then I'm going to split this one down the center belly and these two I'll split down the center back. And then after I have um, those all split and they're dry, then I'm going to lay them out to see the order that I'm going to put them on in on the jacket. So after these are all dry, I'll come back and show you how I've got them laid out. I've taken and laid out my six skins and I put the bellies down and the backs up and sorted them how I thought they looked the best. And the next step will be after this is I'm going to renumber the rows and then I took my pattern and I set my pattern on top of the fur and the center back is going to be where the rumps join and then the front is going to be 
where the necks lined up. So I've got enough width here on the half. You can see my pattern. And um, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to trim all the rumps off. I've got it lined up where I'm going to mark my rows. Then I'm going to come across and you can see where this is like the shoulder line. See this stripe here and this stripe here and this stripe here. I'm going to get those all in a line and then all the way down and then I'm going to um, mark off the rumps the same and I'll trim the rumps first and then I'm going to after I've got that done then I'll lay it back out and then I'm going to figure out how deep my row is going to be so I will be trimming off a portion of the top of the back I'm just not quite sure how much yet but, um, yeah, I think it's going to look great. In calculating the rows, how wide, what you do is you take the length of your pattern from the very top of the shoulder. I th think I said before the top neckline. No, you go to the highest peak, the shoulder. And if that's the tallest on the back or if that's the tallest on the front, you need to make sure you get the tallest part to the bottom of the hem. So that measured 30 inches. And I had six skins, so that meant I could make each row, um, you know, five inches. The gal kind of wanted it a little longer, so what I did was I thought, well, I'm going to make each row five and a half and see how it comes out. And I did, and I like the layout. So it's going to end up being 33 inches long, and I think she'll love it. So here's my layout, and the skins are, you know, in the center back. What I did when I worked on these was I squared it at the rump, and from the belly, I measured up five inches and um, squared that up to the necks. So once I had it squared, I trimmed off the center back at the rumps. Um, well, not the center back, but I trimmed off the rumps at the center and then squared the top edge of the backs and we're good. So when I start to join this up, what I'm gonna do is join the center rumps all the way each row and then I'm gonna start from the center and join row one to row two, row two to row three, all the way up. So this will just almost be like a blanket when I get done with it. And um, then what we'll do is we'll take our pattern and we'll mark our pattern back on a new piece of craft paper on the board. And then we're going to start nailing because it gets nailed one more time after you've sewed it together. So I might be able to somehow get a collar out of these necks. It might be kind of pretty. I don't know for sure, but these are probably going to get trimmed off about here. So that leaves me maybe two to three inches for a collar, um, the whole length, but if not, I'm going to use another skin. So here's my back again on top. Here's my front laid out next to that. So you can see kind of how it's going to come together. So next time I'll show you, it'll be all sewed together. So in joining this together, I start at that center back seam, and I'm joining this. Um, this is the last row I've got, so I'm joining this row to the row underneath it. 
And you just want to make sure when you're sew when you're sewing that you have all your hairs tucked down, and you know you just sew a nice even seam. And after you're done sewing, um, this is kind of hard for me to show you why with one hand. But after you're done sewing, then what you're going to do is you're going to come back and you're going to take the back end of your knife over your seam and you're going to flatten that out and you want to check to see if there's any skips because now is the time to go over it. So then you flip it to the front side and you comb that seam out um, or you comb out, you know, see how it looks and then we can put it on the board. My pattern is marked out on the board. So there's the back, there's the front, going this direction, that's the other half of the back, and the other front. So the tallest part of the body on the pattern was the top of this shoulder line coming off the neckline. So from that point, I measured down the five and a half inch for each row and squared it, carried that over to the back, and then each row I marked with a raised staple, and you can kind of see the little circles I have on here, so you can kind of tell each spot that I've got a raised staple. So when I go to nail this out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be able to feel that staple and I'll know that my row is on point. So when I go to nail this out, what I'm going to do is, whoops, I'm going to take my fur and it's all joined together. It's just like a big blanket and I'm going to um, wet it with water and I will start at the center back so my five and a half down from the point that I need to get the center back is right here. I'll match that and then I'll go over across to that front and then I'll go over across to that front, down the center back, continue, and each side to side. So yeah, now at this point, you know, your fur is all joined together. If you just wanted this to be a big blanket, you just block it out rectangle and you'd have a big blanket. It would look nice. If you wanted a shorter jacket, you'd do shorter rows uh, or, you know, not as many skins. This could be done the same way in fox and it can be done the same way in raccoon. So there's several different types of fur that you can um, do a skin on skin or split skin, vest, jacket, blanket, whatever. So I'm going to wet this and then when I come back I'll show you how I'll nail it down. So I have this all set. It's all nailed down and what happens is it's going to dry overnight. Um, I might come back and check it in about a half an hour or so and I might pull some of these um, line staples if I think they're they might bubble or show a mark. But when I do my darts, um, I've had that, you know, I've got my pattern marked on the table. And I've also got my pattern that's my working pattern. And I put a line of staples on the paper on this edge. Then what I do is... I also have a staple that's underneath so I know when the dart stops. So I cut, when I'm nailing, I cut a slice, not out, but I cut a slice down to the point where the dart ends and it's underneath here where the you know, pen mark is where that dart opening is. This is just a real narrow, um, you know, back dart. And then I spread my fur and I put the other side of that line that I opened 
on the other side of the line of the dart. So there's no fur cut out. The fur is going to look really nice once that's joined up. And I do the same thing on the front dart. So the front dart, I've got it marked at the bottom underneath. And I you can literally kind of like even take your pattern and you can lay your pattern on there so you can kind of see where you know where to slice your fur. But you just slice your fur, you're just opening up your fur, the length of the dart, you nail your backside first, then you spread your fur so your front side matches that seam line, the other seam line, and then when you go to join this up, it's going to look like you never cut anything out of the fur because it's going to look like it exactly went back together. So you're just making, uh, you know, you're making a cut in the fur, but you're not cutting any fur out. So when you sew this up, it'll be, it'll be beautiful. So we're going to let this dry overnight and um, then we'll take it off. Tomorrow, we'll square it, mark it, mark the pockets, and then we'll be ready to um, sew the shoulder seams, the darts, and the next step is uh, probably the lining. It's dried overnight, and the next step that I do is I take my pattern and I lay it on my bobcat and I mark my pattern out so you can see I've got the neckline the shoulder the armhole there's my front coming down there's my pocket my front edge going up and now that it's marked what I'll do is I'll cold tape that and then um, well, first I'm going to take it off the board. I'm going to take all the staples out, and then I'm going to cold tape those edges before I um, cut this out. So I hope that gives you a good idea of how it turned out. It looks good. There's one more step that I do. Um, I did take this off the board, and um, I went over it and checked for any skips uh, that show up after you're done, you know, nailing. Sometimes you'll have a few. And then I restapled it on the board, not completely, but, you know, top, bottom, the neckline, got it nice and flat. And then what I do is I take tipping and I do just the bellies. You could do the whole thing, but it's not necessary. I do the bellies. And you can see where I go up, like right by the leg, the front leg across to the center and the back. And I do my pocket edges, I do my seams, my armhole seams, my neckline shoulder seams, darts. And what this does is tipping is a colorant, it's a dry stain that you mix. And I make just a small container. Um, I don't know, I just use a glass jar. And you mix this dry stain with uh, denatured alcohol so it dries real fast. And then you paint it on with a small paintbrush. So what it does is it colors the leather. It doesn't go through, it doesn't go through to the fur, but it colors the leather and it gives the base of the leather, when the leather is turned back, it gives the base a little bit more of a darker finish so that your white, you know, the white leather part of the skin doesn't show through. And it makes it a little bit more symmetrical and it gives it a good, it gives the fur good depth, I think. Um, this is something you could do on, like, the tips of a beaver mitt, if it's light, color, 
um, and you, you know, other things. The stain comes in black, brown. This is a pastel color, so it's not real dark. But um, now this will dry for probably about an hour and a half to two hours, and then I'll be able to cold tape it. So it you don't see it from the fur side. It just kind of like gives the leather a little bit of cosmetic help. At this point, I've got my vest cold taped and cut or trimmed. And I've got my pockets marked. I've got my side seams marked. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to cut those out. Um, I'm going to be putting a drawstring in this, so I might not even need to cut that, uh, that area out. But um, the next thing is I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to wet glaze the hair so um, that's completely done. You just spritz it lightly with uh, water. And just to give you an idea of how that tipping works, it just kind of, can you see that coloration in there? It just kind of colors the leather just enough to hide it so it's not quite so bleachy white looking. But it doesn't affect the fur at all. Um, and cold tape is a fabric backed as a fabric tape that's got an adhesive backing. You buy it from a furrier supply place and when you use it you just put it down on your like if this was my edge you put it down it sticks and then it stays when you sew so that it doesn't your seams don't stretch. I can't do this very good one-handed. But um, you get the idea. It stays in place. Um, sometimes after I'm done sewing, I'll remove it. But, um, yeah. So this is my front edge. This is, I extended my um, front facing up. So this is going to turn like that. So that's going to be my facing. And it should look good. Uh, the next thing I got to do is figure out a collar. So I think I'm going to use a fresh skin and uh, we'll go from there. This is how it looks after I've got it wet glazed and it's going to dry. So the process is basically you're training the hair to go in the direction that the garment should go. So I want my hair to go down. So you start at the top, you do a spritz with water and your water bottle, and then you follow up with your fur comb and you brush everything down in the same direction. Then it dries. Now you're not saturating it, you're lightly misting it because if you saturate it too much, you're gonna get like wavy fur. And you don't want the fur to get wavy. I got a little bit wavy right here, but I'll come back and hit it again and straighten that out. So this is a very important part of setting up your project when you do something, whether it's a vest or, you know, even a beaver skin, glazing it helps get this hairs going in the same direction. So it's important to do. But I think it looks beautiful. The spots are real predominant, and it really is going to look nice when it's joined up. This will dry for probably about a half an hour. I have the vest joined up, and um, I put in my pockets, and got my darts joined up. I put on... Uh, facing for around the armholes, but I had to figure out what to do for a collar. So I nailed out a skin, and I thought that was going to look good. The skin looks good, but I'm not sure if I like it on the coat. I kind of folded it in half. 
I mean the vest, I kind of folded it in half and we'll see. So then my next step was I had a bunch of front legs. So I had opened them up. That's what they look like when I cut them off. And I opened them up, split them. And then what I did was I joined two of them together and nailed them out. So when I come off the board, you'll be able to see a little bit better. But, um, so yeah, I just think this might be kind of pretty. They've got really nice markings. It'll be very distinct up at the neckline. And I'll be using, this is my collar pattern. So it's not real big. So if I put that on there, you can kind of get a judge of what that would kind of like look like. But we'll see how this goes after it gets dried. And I'm going to make the collar and then I'll see if I like it. If I like it, fine. Otherwise, I'm going to use this skin over here and cut the collar out of that. But I kind of hate to waste the whole skin just for a collar. Alrighty. I joined up the collar and I put that on and I did use the paws and I think it turned out pretty. So once I get it all finished, I'll show you what it looks like. And the next step is after I got it all joined up, I put um, tape on the armholes, tape around the edges, and I'm gonna build the fronts up so they get a layer of um, hair canvas on the front edge with a bit of a fleece and the pockets get the same and so that's what I'm going to be doing next so once I get this all pinned on and ready to go I'll sh show it to you again I've got my vest all set up built up and I'll show you how I did that I think my collar turned out nice. It's got real pretty distinctive markings up there, so I think it looks sharp. I'm real pleased with that. Um, so what I did was I put a layer of blue edge canvas on the front. It's about three or four inches wide all the way up. On the outside edge here, I put a piece of fleece, and it's about two inches wide, I suppose. Half of it is under, half of it is exposed. When this gets folded back, that fleece will help protect that front edge from wearing. And um, I've got my hooks in. I put in regular fur hooks on this. <clears throat> vest because it's an edge-to-edge -edge closure and Keska hooks just don't work real well. So those are secured in. I use a piece of hair canvas on the back side so it helps protect the um, fur from that stress on the hook. From my pockets, what I do is I take a piece of that hair canvas and I cut a six-inch slit, pull my pocketing through, I've got a layer of fleece that's on the forward edge of the pocket and that's um, stitched down and then I do my stitching around the edge of the pockets, two rows on each side, lay the pocket flat and I tack it from the top going around to about midway kind of even with the bottom edge of the pocket over here. So this whole bottom of the pocket is free, which is good because you want it not to be flat against the coat. Then on this side, I stitch down the tail end of the pocket about two thirds of the way. So my pocket's nice. Now on the front edge, <clears throat> what you do is you come back on your pocket 
after you've got it secured on the inside. And on the forward edge, you top stitch going through catching the grosgrain ribbon and the stuff on the inside, your interfacing, so that this edge stays nice. And you wouldn't even know the pockets there. So the collar gets a layer of, it's more of a spongy um, pillon. It's real thin. And it gets a layer of the blue edge canvas underneath the collar. And on the edge, it gets that fleece all the way around the whole coat. Um, I put a collar stay in. And I usually sandwich the collar stay between the hair canvas and the fleece. And then on this end, I just thought, ah, I'm just going to put a little bit of um, fleece on that because it extended a little bit further. Sometimes I extend my collar pillow stuff a little bit more down, but on this one, I didn't. Um, the armholes, they get a layer of hair canvas that's stitched once near the edge, once near the outside edge, and it's got um, a layer of fleece on the inside. It gets turned back, and then you do an inside stitch around to help hold it nice, and then you sew your um, seam tape edge down and tack that. The shoulders get uh, this is a real natural small shoulder pad, so it's not adding height at all. I mean, it's maybe a, maybe an eighth of an inch thick, which is nothing. But what it adds is support for the garment on a hanger, and when it's on your body, it'll help give good weight distribution, and it makes a difference. Everything that I make gets a shoulder pad, and it always should if it's a fur coat. So what I have left to do is put the rings on my other edge on the other front. And then these front edges, I've got this pinned so you can kind of see the front edges get a stitch all the way around top to bottom and the collar about three fourths of an inch from the front edge. That's the first row. Then you come back in and you pin again, about an inch past that. So it'll get stitched down again. And then the final stitching will be where the edge that's got the tape on will get stitched down flat, like I did the armholes. So once that's done, then we'll put in the lining. On the hem on this coat, um, I put in a, a layer of that Hymo canvas on the bias. And I just did grosgrain ribbon on the hem of the coat because I wanted to keep that as much as I could of that white bottom as possible. So if I would have turned something up, I would lose a little bit of that. And this will let me be able to do the hem right on the edge. So my lining will come down when I sew this to about right here, and we should be good. So the next thing is uh, sewing the lining. But, yeah, I'm real pleased with the way this is turning out. I think it's going to be really sharp when it's done. I have the fronts all finished down and the collar. And the next thing I'm going to do is put in a drawstring. So I put it on the dress form, found the waistline, and measured up from the bottom across the body of the leather of the coat. And so that's where I'm going to put my drawstring in. And I also have my lining cut. I use the same pattern, of course, for the... Well, this is the pattern on the board, but I use the same pattern, of course, for the lining. And I use a china silk... Um, it's just a lightweight, I don't know, probably a polyester blend for interfacing. And then this is a um, kind of a silk Bemberg blend fabric. I get this at Samuel Bauer. 
they have all kinds of colors. And so I cut my hanky pocket. This is the ruching that's going to go at the neckline. And this is my tunnel for my drawstring. So when I do the tunnel for the drawstring, I'm going to center, make a one inch um, tunnel, and then I'm going to center that on that line I drew and stitch it at the top and stitch it at the bottom. And this will run all the way to, I have to open this up right here. But this will run all the way to the front edge right there. And my drawstring is going to be on the inside only. And it's going to come out right at the edge of the facing. So I'm going to put the drawstring in first. Then I'll put in the ruching at the neckline. Put my hanky pocket in. And then I'm going to pin in my lining. This is the completed vest. So my lining is in. And I've got my drawstring in. So this is adjustable. She can um, cinch it a little bit at the waist to give it a little contour. And the drawstring is only in the inside of the coat. This isn't going to go to the outside on this one. And I think it turned out really pretty. So what I started with was a selection of bobcat skins. And this client sent in 11, and this is what I didn't use, but she's got enough for, I don't know, a lot of stuff. So I hope you found the video interesting, and that's the back again, and like and share. Thank you so much. I want to show you how I cut those um, little tits out. It's just basically a real small oval. And you don't want to cut anything more than you have to. And you just want to make sure you got the margins. So you can double check that against on the fur side. But no, the next, these will get closed up um, by furnishing. The other thing I do at this point is I also check the fur side for any damages. And if there's any bald spots or scars or anything like that in the fur, I, I take care of this at this time. <clears throat> so these skins actually are pretty good. I have got one that's got a damage up near the arm um, or the leg, whatever you want to call it. And so I'm going to fix that. And But otherwise... They've been pretty good, so I haven't had a lot of work doing that.